Kirk with a mouth is well loved for his smart wit and charming unhinged nature. But don't let your guard down, Deadpool is as deadly as he is hilarious. I know, right? Anyway, I got places to be. You know what to do. Disagreeing with Deadpool is dangerous, even if it's just over movie opinions. In Deadpool Merc with a Mouth 5, Deadpool blasts a guy for saying that the prequel Star Wars films are better than the original trilogy. Literally, the soldier says two sentences and then he never speaks again. Technically, Deadpool was probably eventually going to off the soldier anyways as he was part of a secretly evil organization, but I still think that if I were ever to come face to face with Deadpool, any opinions I have of pop culture, I'll keep them to myself. In the record-breaking 2016 film, Deadpool, a big focal point of the movie is Wade's relationship with his fiance Vanessa. They are very much in love and she is more than capable of keeping up with Wade's wacky personality and humor. Unfortunately, when Wade gets the cancer diagnosis, he decides to leave Vanessa without warning. He did it so she wouldn't have to watch him die. And I get where he's coming from, but leaving in the middle of the night with no explanation isn't the best way to do it. Wade signs up for an experimental treatment, it's torture basically, they are trying to wake up any dormant genes. Goodness, he actually has some and survives. At this point, Vanessa still doesn't really know what's happened with her fiance and finds out in maybe the worst way possible. The person who is torturing Wade kidnaps her and she's stuck in the middle of a bloody battle in a battered helicarrier. Eventually, the pair reconcile after it all ends. If something is going to help or benefit Deadpool or someone he loves in some way, Deadpool's going to take or do it. In Deadpool Volume 3, Issue 4, Wade Wilson finds out that every Everything in him has broken down, his healing factor isn't working as well and getting worse every day. Wade has a serious form of cancer and the only thing keeping him alive is the healing factor. Without it, he's dead no pool. There is hope though, he has high amounts of gamma radiation that has slowed down his cellular degeneration. To fix that, he needs to get the gamma radiation into every part of him to balance out all the energy. The quickest way is to find gamma radiation that is attached to an organic base so that it will merge with the body better. Basically, he needs Hulk's blood. When he gets to the Hulk, he comes out a little strong. The Hulk is not willing to give up his blood, so the pair battle it out. The thing with the Hulk is, you can attack him as much as you want, but it's hard to make him bleed. Deadpool makes the Hulk a pincushion, trying to get the red stuff, or in the Hulk's case, the green stuff. Until finally, Deadpool uses a very big, broken, sharp pipe. Deadpool gets what he was coming for. Ouch. It turns out that it doesn't really matter who you are. If Deadpool needs you in the line of battle, you're at the front. Even his own daughter. This villain called Madcap was running around the city pretending to be Deadpool, creating chaos and dragging Deadpool's name through the mud. The only person allowed to do that is Deadpool, so this Madcap guy, he's gotta go. But how do you lure someone like that out? To steal an example from Deadpool, remember in Jaws when they put blood in the water? This time, the blood is Deadpool's very young daughter. There is a plan in place, so when Madcap shoots at her, in comes her boy Quicksilver to transport her to safety. So she's fine. She gets taken to a car that will transport her and her mother to a safe house far far away. But it could have easily not been fine. Personally, I don't think I could put my own family in harm's way like that, but I guess that's why I'm not the Merc with a Mouth. After you're reassured the kid is safe, cut back to Deadpool and there are bullet holes in the wall where his daughter just was. It was a close call. We were a couple milliseconds away from a disaster or possibly even an Age of Ultron kind of ending for Quicksilver. Hearing the word Hydra as a Marvel fan, you immediately kind of go, oh, this person is a bad guy. But that's not always the case. What would you do to support your family. Turns out some guy named Bob would join Hydra for the benefits and a stable paycheck. To be clear, Hydra Bob is not 100% on board with Hydra or their mission, but he is all in for the dental care. Deadpool found him one day while he was in a bind and forced Bob to help him out. And from that day forward, a beautiful and destructive friendship was born. While Deadpool isn't always the one hurting Bob, he is usually part of the reason why Bob is stuck in the fight anyway. Deadpool has gotten the poor guy shot multiple times in multiple places, chased by dinosaurs, and even been the cause of giving him scurvy when they played pirates and then got lost at sea for six weeks. There has been a lot of mental trauma too. We have to remember that Bob is just a guy, a regular human guy, even described as a cowardly human guy. So having to reattach Deadpool's head, plus have everything happen to you that was previously listed, I hope Hydra's benefits included therapy. Deadpool, if you are listening, please release my man Bob. Please stop hurting him. Deadpool is a major Captain America fan, which is a good thing 
because the captain is a very good role model. He's a very good citizen, a positive influence on Deadpool. But there was that weird time in Cap's life that no one likes to talk about, the Hydra phase. Hydra Captain America having a super fan Deadpool at his disposal is a thing of nightmares. It is also the reason why Agent Phil Coulson's life was cut short. Agent Coulson originated in the cinematic universe and he was a quick fan favorite, so loved that he entered the comic universe. In Deadpool Volume 6, Issue 27, Coulson starts to rightfully grow suspicious of Captain America and begins to investigate him. Cap, of course, finds out and sends out Deadpool to take care of Coulson. Deadpool holds the captain in such high regard that he doesn't even question the mission, he just gets it done. It's brutal because Agent Coulson is a well loved character, but also if he hadn't died, maybe everything wouldn't have been so terrible later. There's no mind control here or anything. Deadpool literally just did it because he adores Captain America so much. It's great to have heroes, but you can't just follow them blindly like this. Coulson, you will be missed, but not for long. He was revived in 2019. It pretty much goes without saying, but here I go again. Deadpool has limited morals. If it benefits him, he's gonna do what he needs to do. In this particular case, it involves a completely innocent civilian. In Deadpool Volume 5, Issue 11, Deadpool is going after a shapeshifter. This is tough because the shapeshifter makes it look like Deadpool is trying to attack superheroes. That looks like a problem, so in steps Daredevil. At one point, Daredevil is chasing Deadpool, who is chasing the actual bad guy. To get Daredevil off his back, Wade Wilson chooses probably the worst option and shoots random innocent guy in the leg. Not a fatal shot, but it could have been fatal if the guy was not taken to the hospital immediately. Deadpool knows that Daredevil is going to stop and help the man, but still, what, what did my man do other than be in the wrong place at the wrong time? These last three points are just Deadpool attacking everyone. All the heroes we know and love, Deadpool took care of them. All took place and Deadpool kills the multiverse. You know what you're getting into with a title like that. Deadpool has gone insane and the X-Men take him to a doctor, but surprise, the doctor is a bad guy with affinity for brainwashing. The doctor tried to brainwash Deadpool but only ended up destroying his inner voices and replacing them with one voice that knew the universe was a lie and super adamant Deadpool and everyone. So bye bye doctor and all the heroes we know and love. The tough part for our heroes is that it's very hard to kill a Deadpool. Every time they thought they won, he would just regenerate and come back. I don't think I can describe much of what exactly Deadpool did to everyone. Anything you can come up with, it probably happened. The amount of unhinged, disturbing things Deadpool does while plowing through the ranks of Marvel heroes is disturbing. At one point, after killing all the X-Men, he wore Beast as a fur coat while fighting Wolverine. Wearing someone as a coat, already incredibly messed up, but when you smack onto that that he's wearing your friend, at that point, take me out, I'm done. No amount of therapy is ever fixing that. Wolverine did get taken out and his healing factor wasn't helping him this time. Deadpool wins, he even finds the writers who if Deadpool got everyone else, there's no way those guys stand a chance. And it turns out, our universe is next, stressful. Deadpool Killustrated is a similar idea comes right after, but instead of limiting himself to just Marvel, Deadpool branches out to what he believes are the sources of Marvel characters, other literary characters. Deadpool's first round of painting the universe red didn't stick, apparently. In order to stop the constant cycle of death and resurrection and suffering, Deadpool travels to other universes to eliminate classic characters. If those classic characters never existed, then creators wouldn't have been inspired, and then comic characters would have no base, and then therefore disappear. If he can't get to the heroes themselves, then he can at least end the idea of them. So Deadpool goes into the nexus of all realities on a mission to that. He takes out beloved characters like, like Moby Dick, Dracula, the characters of Little Women, and Pinocchio, plus more. Quite heartbreaking, because what chance did the Little Women ever have against the mouth? Though Deadpool completely destroyed everything, Sherlock Holmes saved it, because he made sure to remember it all. So because one person remembered the stories, the stories could come alive again. There is a third round in the Killogy. Deadpool kills Deadpool. Technically, the Deadpool that was acting out this whole time wasn't the Deadpool we know. It was one from a different universe that had been driven beyond the brink of madness, believing himself to be nothing more than a fictional character he set out on a quest of destruction. This time, he came to the conclusion that in order to end his own suffering, he had to lure out the beings that created realities for entertainment by ending everybody's lives. Again, the only thing is no one was coming forward, and at a certain point, he deduced that because Deadpool was the only one who knew the worlds were fictional, then Deadpool must be the source, the beings he's looking for. So now he's added all the Deadpools to his destroy list. He pretty much succeeds, only two Deadpools are left standing by the end of it all, and he's not one of them. <laughs> Honestly, I'm glad. I don't think my brain handle trying to together any more of this. There's a lot to unpack here and somehow still more. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and make your mark 
mark on the comments section down below. Let me know your favorite Deadpool moment, good or gruesome. This is Juliana signing off. See you later.